This is going to be an introduction to a type of reaction called nucleophilic acyl substitution. This is a reaction that takes place among the carboxylic acid derivatives. And so I'm going to begin by just explaining exactly what the carboxylic acid derivatives are. As you can kind of imagine from the name, a carboxylic acid derivative is a molecule that is derived from a carboxylic acid, so it's structurally similar to a carboxylic acid. This is one of the carboxylic acid derivatives. Instead of having an OH group on the end, it has a halogen, typically a chlorine, but it could also be a, a bromine. This type of molecule is called an acyl halide. Specifically, this one is an acyl chloride. Uh, also, it is known as an acid halide or an acid chloride. That's a little bit easier to say. Acyl in chemistry, the ACYL, that is referring to the um, carboxylic or the carbonyl group. Another one of the carboxylic acid derivatives is the anhydride. So this is a molecule that has two carbon oxygen double bonds that are separated by a single bonded oxygen. This again, this is called the anhydride, sometimes called the acid anhydride. We also have the ester functional group, which you are familiar with that. It looks a lot like a carboxylic acid, but it has another R group on the oxygen instead of a hydrogen. So this is our ester. And the last one that we're gonna look at here is called an amid. And this has an NH2 group, uh, or I shouldn't say it's necessarily an NH2 group. There could be anything on these nitrogens. So we'll say NR2. It could be other alkyl groups or it could be hydrogens. And this, again, this is called an amid. Looks like amide, but it's pronounced amid. Um, so these are um, the carboxylic acid derivatives that undergo this nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction. In this substitution reaction, we're gonna be substituting the uh, group that's attached, the special group that's attached to the carbon oxygen double bond. So these groups that I'm putting in boxes, these are the portions of the molecule that will be undergoing some sort of substitution. The general like overall mechanism for nucleophilic acyl substitution is going to look like this. So I'm going to use the symbol Z to indicate you know, whatever we have in the box, any one of these derivatives right here. Uh, and this is obviously this is reacting with some sort of nucleophile, which you're familiar with. A nucleophile is going to have a lone pair of electrons on it. And the nucleophile is going to attack the carbon oxygen double bond and open up the carbon oxygen double bond. And this will give us an intermediate, it looks um, something along these lines. Not all of the nucleophilic acyl substitutions are going to follow this exact mechanism, but it'll be something along these lines. And then the carbon oxygen double bond will close back up and uh, our Z will fall off of the molecule. And we have successfully replaced whatever Z was with the nucleophile. In the next video, I'm going to show you more detailed mechanism for a, a couple of nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions um, with, like I said, just a little bit more detail than what I'm showing here. Before um, I end this video, I want to talk a little bit about the nucleophilic acyl substitution reactivity of our different carboxylic acid derivatives. This is something that you're going to typically be asked to you know, do on a homework problem, rank the derivatives in order of re reactivity. The acid chloride or the acyl chloride is the most reactive out of all of the carboxylic acid derivatives. Um, this is because that chloride is a really good leaving group. So this is the most reactive out of all of our derivatives. And then I wrote, the, wrote these down in order of reactivity. So the anhydride is the next most reactive. This is a really good leaving group because the leaving group is gonna be stabilized by resonance. Um, and then the ester is not very reactive. This is actually a really bad leaving group because it's a really strong base. And the amide is the least reactive out of all of them. The reason that the amide, well, there's two reasons that the amide is the least reactive. First of all, this is an awful leaving group. This is like the NH2 minus ion, which we know to be an incredibly strong base. Um, second of all, the amide molecule is resonance stabilized. So this molecule here, in addition to having a terrible leaving group, the molecule itself is resonance stabilized, which means that it's not very interested in being attacked by a nucleophile.